Alright, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how I made this Julius Randall design, and we'll be going through all the layers. So starting off, I, all I did was I added a simple orange background. I went and sampled the colors from the next jersey, and essentially went from there. Then I added this selective color layer. So essentially for this layer, all I did was mess with the cyan, and reduce that to about negative 43, as well as the blacks. And then I added this backdrop of New York and just a slight Gaussian blur. The blur settings are at about 2.2. So this effect essentially just gives it some more depth. I added this layer on color dodge as well at a slightly lower fill. I also made this black and white. And that's essentially it for the backdrop. After that, I added this blue sort of polygon and added the subway map of New York on low normal just 8% fill. It's barely visible just for some texture and depth. And then after that I went and added the New York Knicks logo. So this is like the their old throwback subway logo and basically I put this on saturation. So sa this is the original logo and on saturation all it does is it desaturates the color and thus gives me this nice gray outline. So then we have this first Julius Randall. So this guy at the back, this is how the picture was before I added any adjustment layers. So it's a very bland photo, two dimensional. And then I started off first by adding this camera raw. And my camera raw effects I'll quickly show you right now. So once again, here's the before and the after. And essentially the key things come the texture and the clarity. Like, so for example, if I were to bring the texture down to zero and the clarity down to zero, we can see like how drastic of an effect that makes. And then after that, I went and I added some selective color. I always do a selective color first on these, um, on these players. And basically, the main thing for the selective color are the reds. I'll go more in depth than on my player treatment in another video, perhaps. And then for the reds, I turned on the cyan and the blacks. So once again, here's the effect of the selective color. I also usually like to mess around with the white, so I turned on the whites 26. This basically just gives it like, gives him the, the highlights on his face, a bit more depth. And then after that, we move to the exposure. So this is like some slight dodging and burning. And what I did is I turned the exposure on at three and went in with a really low flow brush, like 3%, as you can see up here, and painted on with white to reveal. So essentially, if I were to quickly show you guys, um, here is what one eye looks like without the effects, and here it is with. So the last effect for this Julius Randall was a human saturation. I wanted this back image of New York to reflect, like to emit some color, so I added a colorized layer of orange, hue 41, and full saturation. So that I was really happy with how this Randall turned out in the background. Then we move to this second Randall picture. So this one, I actually added tons of effects on it. And so I started off with a couple of camera raw filters. Yeah, so as you can see, without the camera raw, there's really, this is just one of the two camera raw layers that I applied. There's really like no depth, no clarity, no texture to it. And I also added a smart sharpen. So this really, smart sharpen really just takes away um, all of the texture that I added around the hair and on the beard. So this essentially, that's all I, the smart sharpen essentially does. I turn those layers back on. All right, so then moving on to the rest of the effects on this second Julius Randall picture. Once again, I added first a selective color. So the whole aim of this was to match the color of his skin, the first, the two picture skins. And I did that via messing with the whites on yellow and black, and of course, messing with the reds. Then once again, I added this hue and saturation to colorize, matched it up again to an effective hue like as you can see, if I were to move this hue, it would change the color. And finally, I added an exposure layer, just like what I did last time, on three exposure, painted in the areas that I wanted to be brighter, like the eyes. Then, what 
I moved to was this. Yeah, so I added some foreground and some depth. Basically, the way that I did this was I added this vintage texture. If I were to like maybe open it here, this is the vintage texture. And basically, I added this on overlay at 14% onto this blue. And behind this foreground, I have a high exposure um, layer of blue. This basically gives it like some vibrancy with some slight blur on it, gives it some more depth. I quite like the effect of this. And then after, I added some type. So I went in and added some three randalls, um, all clipped to this blue layer. And I put them all on overlay at varying opacity. So essentially what this gave me was a nice little sort of like gradient effect on the text. Then I added some two textures. So these textures are there to kind of like add uh, some scratching effects, trying to make it more of a grungy texture design. Then I went to the first Randall picture. So this picture, um, once again, I went through and added the first like small Randall picture. I added a camera raw filter. So this is the image prior to the camera raw. And this is the image, if I can turn it on, post camera raw. So once again, more texture, more clarity. And also, I believe I messed with the shadows oh, quite a lot in this camera raw too. So then I went in and added selective color. The aim of this was to match these to the color of all the skins. And then we added some curves. So this curve, the curves layer here, was to really make it just a little bit darker up top. Uh, and then we went in and added an exposure. So my light source for this, of course, is this orange part over here. So um, if you were to look at the ex exposure effect, it goes from darker on the left side of Randall to right. And then finally, I added some hue and saturation. This one's slightly less saturated. It's a little bit dim, so 85. And once again, gives it that same sort of orangey effect. All right, so moving on to the next image. Oh yeah, also, I added this layer. So this was just, I, mer I merged all my shadows at the end, but essentially I would have like three or four layers of shadows all on varying fill and varying flow. And basically I would just use a brush that is slightly rotated. So a brush like this, this will be in red. But anyways, so I can just create some shadows like so. And then after this, I moved to this Randall Pass image. So this was how the image looked in the end. But prior, this is how the image looked to start. So here is the original image that I extracted the photo from. And then after this, what I first did was I added a ton of camera raw smart sharpen. And once again, more texture, more clarity. I also added some sharpening to this image, like a smart sharpen layer right here. And then once again, a good old selective color. I added some cyan, a little bit of magenta, and black. I believe I also messed with the blacks here, yeah, a little bit. So I just went with negative four. The blacks kind of take because this I found this photo was quite like a bit too intense for me. So I turned I turned on the blacks a bit. And then after that, I went in and added an exposure layer. This exposure layer, once again, was to brighten up the eyes and provide some lighting on the left side. Moving on, I added, once again, colored lighting, hue saturation layer. This process gets kind of repetitive once we get to the end, but soon we'll be getting to the color correction. That's where a lot of the magic happens. And the shadows. So the shadows here, I didn't actually merge. And it's just these three layers, so these are the shadows. Oops. These are the shadows. And yeah. The last image was to kind of complete the composition. I added this small Randall pick. So this was him with him kind of like driving. And for this image, so this is what it was prior to any adjustment layers, and this is what it was prior to any smart filters. So after, first I added small filters, two camera raw layers, and 
From that, I went in and added a selective color. The selective color, like you can really tell how much the color, the color quality in this image as it gives that nice saturated look. Once again, the reds were really helpful here and the yellows. Next, I moved to exposure. So I added a little bit on the, so if you look at the eyes prior, this is how the eyes look before the exposure layer. And this is after. The key effect is once again on the left side. And then below that layer, I have this like yellow orange kind of um, hue saturation layer. And that gives it that this uniform type of light. Okay, then I added two more sort of depth textures. So this lens there, you see like right in the foreground, it adds a little bit more depth. And then I added a distort. So at the bottom, this, it's a really simple layer, just put on the screen a color dodging mean with a gradient map, black and white gradient map. So this is before. The gradient map is after the gradient map. And then we added to finish off the design, finish it up with some uh, color correction layers. So I started off with, so this is what it looked on after all the color correction was applied. And the color correction for this one was fairly simple as I already like where the design was before. I added some white lighting. So this is a gradient map, um, not a gradient. This is a gradient, just a, a white gradient. If you hold down shift, you can simply just per, like add some nice white light. And then I turned down the fill to 41%, added a hue and saturation to give it some colored lighting. Once again, on colorize, I added some dark layer to the bottom, put it on multiply. So this is kind of giving it like that, that base depth. And then finally, we added a selective color to give it a uniform look. So I messed with the yellows quite a lot here. The reds a little bit and the whites and blacks here. And finally, I added a slight little curves, a slight little curves layer. This was to brighten it up a little bit because I wasn't a huge fan of the way it was looking darker. Once again, here's pre-CC and post color correction. So you can really give it that bright light and really helps to emphasize this yellow orangish color. And then finally, I added a camera raw filter. I merged all the layers, duplicated them, merged all of them and applied a camera raw filter. So here are the effects for this layer. It's really, really simple, really, really minor. So I added some highlights, shadows. I reduced the highlights, added shadows, whites, blacks, and a little bit of texture and clarity. Then I went over, sharpened the image just a little bit and messed with the reds and oranges. So here's without the reds and oranges. Once again, here's those all like the primary color correction effects. So yeah, and that's essentially it. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new.